Foarte am întrebat de la talk session number 2. It's a talk for the session about seismic restraints and uh, seismic restraint design guidelines. So, in this talk, I will try to explain a little about the earthquake, how, what it is and how does it occur. I will explain a little about uh, seismic restraints and how they help uh, deal with the effects of earthquakes on piping, ducting, and electrical systems. I will show how to space the seismic constraints and how to calculate the seismic forces on pipes. And finally, I will show some code exemptions for piping and electrical systems. I will not talk about the bracing of mechanical equipment and the special considerations to consider with drain waste and fire protection systems. And I will not talk about consequential damage. These are the resources I use to prepare this presentation, most of the material I'm using is from kinetics guidelines, which is um, mainly a summary of all the other books. So I'll first start with talking about earthquakes. Uh, as we all know, the land we are living on uh, is formed of tectonic plates. These are giant uh, rock plates, size of continents, and uh, they connect with each other through these lines called fault lines. Uh, these plates are constantly rubbing with each other and uh, an earthquake occurs when one of these plates goes on top or down the other. Mm -hmm. To simplify the idea more, suppose I have this block of foam, I break it into halves, so each half is a tectonic plate. If I bring them back together, this jigsaw uh, border is the fault line. So now if I press these two uh, tectonic plates together and try to rub them together, uh, at first, it will be very hard to, to move them because I have this border line. <coughs> Sorry. But as soon as some of the foam along the fault line breaks, a sudden slip will occur, and this is exactly the earthquake. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I define some of the, uh, of the terms I'm using in this uh, presentation. First of all, what is seismic analysis? It is a part of structural analysis that deals with the response of buildings and non-building structures inside these buildings to earthquakes. The two standards that I will refer most to uh, in this presentation are uh, International Building Code and the ASCE, ASCE Code. International Building Code uh, mainly addresses the livability in a building in terms of uh, structural strength, uh, sanitation, light, and uh, other stuff. While the American Society of Civil Engineers code gives the requirements to calculate the loads on the building, the dead loads, the life loads, and we are interested in the seismic provision uh, giving the earthquake loads. And the pipe run is uh, this, I'm showing in red here, this straight pipe between two elbows of two knees. And the pipe offset is this step pipe here that is uh, breaking the run into two runs. Uh, when I'm referring to a pipe here, the same applies to a duct. Uh, just when I explicitly say that they are different, uh, it will be different. When I talk about axial or longitudinal direction, it is direction along the pipe, and lateral or transverse, it is down perpendicular to the pipe. So, pipe support is a structural element whose purpose is to carry the weight of the pipe and the fluid insulation of cladding. Uh, the type supports that I will talk about are the resting support and the angle support. They only support the weight of the pipe, but the pipe is free to move in any direction. The guide support allows only uh, only limited movement of the pipe under certain conditions, and the anchor support prevents any pipe lateral movement. So here are some uh, examples of supports from the ceiling. This is the resting support. The pipe sits here inside this U plate and it's free to move in any direction. So this is the resting support. Here is the guide support. The whole pipe clamp and saddle uh, structure can move freely on this I beam, except that these small angles here that prevent the pipe after certain millimeters from moving. These are called the guides. And here is the anchor support where the pipe is not allowed to move in any direction. The same but from the ground. Here, when I talk about pipe hanger, I'm talking about this rod with clamp uh, structure that is holding the pipe. Sometimes the clamp is uh, replaced by these pipe clevis. 
And the one I talk about for trapeze support, it is this structure of beam and angles that is supporting. It could be used also for electrical uh, support. Uh, sizing constraint is this cable structure from both sides that is connected to the pipe support from one end and to the building from the other end. I will come to this later in more detail. It's called bracing possible. So a little about the seismic load regulation. We'll first start with the international building code that categorizes the building according to occupancy. Category one are the building as structures whose failure would pose low hazard to human life, and they are not required to continue on operation after earthquakes. While category four are the buildings that are required to continue on operation, like hospitals and fire departments and other stuff. This is cooling uh, comes in category three. After I determine the occupancy category of the building, a structural engineer must calculate the short period design response acceleration parameter and the long period design response acceleration parameter. These are basically how the uh, building structure will respond to an uh, earthquake excitation, both for uh, short period and large period. So I determine the building uh, size and category from this using the occupancy category and the these response values. I use the most stringent one, so if I get here building seismic uh, A and here C, I will take C. This is the, these are the equations defined in ASC for calculation of horizontal and vertical uh, earthquake loads on the uh, pipe structure. Uh, this equation is double like FP is equal to a constant times the weight of the pipe. This constant depends on the natural frequency of the system. The uh, system, the uh, site response to uh, earthquakes. This, how ductile the system is, the piping. This that here is uh, at which level is the piping inside the building height, with this the building height. The most important factor is, uh, here is IP, the importance factor. This factor determines whether I should do seismic testing to this system or not. So for low important systems, this IP is set to 1, like HPAC systems. While firefighting will get an IP of 1.5. I will come to this later in more details also. The vertical is simple, it's just like option times the weight. So what seismic restraints are? As I shown before, it's this cable structure connected to the support. Uh, we have two types of uh, restraints. Transverse restraints and longitudinal restraints. Transverse restraints, they prevent the pipe from swinging side to side relative to the building structure. While longitudinal do the same but for back and forth movement along the pipe axis. But how do simple cables like these prevent the piping uh, that is like several tons in weight from swinging? Well, it does not. The idea is to keep the movement of the piping as close as possible to that of the building. You know, different levels within the same building will respond differently to the earthquake. So if the building is moving like this and the pipe is moving out of this, the support in between will break due to shear forces. So the role of these seismic restraints is to keep the movement between the piping and the building in phase as much as possible to uh, help keep the support intact. So a little about spacing of seismic restraint. Seismic restraints, sorry. I will not go into details of this one. Uh, the sizing or uh, the spacing of the restraints will depend upon the type of the system. Is it uh, ducts, is it uh, pipes, or is it conduits? And uh, on the type of supports. So for single, for the cliff support, it will be different than the trapeze support, for example. Uh, what I'm interested to show you here is that we have a transverse seismic restraints for the transverse uh, restraints. And uh, we have longitudinal spacing for the uh, longitudinal restraints. Usually, SL is equal to ST or is double of ST. But it's always greater than ST. It uh, ranges between ST and 2 ST. So we have 22 rules for seismic design. Simple rules, uh, each one requires a few seconds of explanation. This one defines the rule number one defines the uh, pipeline I already defined before. 
the row 2 defines the offset, but what's interesting here is saying that if the length of the offset is less than st over 16, then these two pipes could be considered as a single run, and I don't have to restrain each one at all. Rule number three says that the transverse and general restraints have to be placed at or near the hangar or support locations, but no more than 100 millimeters away from the support. Rule number four, the hanger rods must be able to withstand the uh, compressor loads that result from restraining the part. Rule number five, this is the part of the part four, the longitudinal seismic restraint facing SL is less than or equal to 2ST. Uh, mostly it is equal to ST or equal to 2, two times ST. Rule number six, if the length of the pipe run is less than ST over two, then I have to use only one transverse seismic restraint. If it is between ST over 2 and ST, I will use two, one at each end. If, uh, if I calculate the distance between the uh, two seismic restraints that I put and found that the distance in between is greater than ST, I have to add as much as seismic restraints, uh, transverse seismic restraints as needed to keep the distance less than ST between any two consecutive seismic restraints. Rule number eight, every pipe of, every, every run of pipe or pipe must have at least one longitudinal seismic restraint, irrespective of the length of this pipe run. It can be located anywhere around the run and not uh, need to be, to be centered. This is one of my favorite rules because it simplifies the uh, calculations tremendously. If I have an elbow and I place the transverse restraint within 24 inches from the elbow, then the, set, the transverse restraint for uh, pipe number one will be considered as longitudinal to pipe number two. And the longitudinal here will be considered as transverse. Uh, this rule just to stress that uh, any pipe run must have at least one longitudinal and one uh, transverse res uh, restraint. Uh, any uh, pipe of length ST greater than uh, sorry, uh, length greater than ST over 2, it will have two uh, transverse restraints and only one longitudinal restraint. Uh, a pipe branching from the main header is called a stub out. If the length of this stub out is less than ST over 16, the whole pipe can be considered as a single pipe run, otherwise, it has to be broken into two. Uh, when I'm taking the step out, I cannot use the, the rule I showed before, the 24-inch rule. Uh, I consider that the support here is, uh, the restraint here is restraining also this pipe, because neither the restraint will have the capacity, nor this pipe will have the capacity to restrain this big pressure. 13 and 14, I will show here on the drawing. For the vertical drop downs from the main handle to an equipment like a pump or a chiller, uh, they always have to be a flexible connection between the equipment and the, and the vertical run to handle the uh, relative motion between the equipment and the pipe run in case of an earthquake. Rule number 14 would be that if the length of this uh, vertical run edge is less than ST over 2, you don't need to add any restraints from here you know, on this uh, part, given that you have a restraint within 24 inches on the other. Otherwise, you have to restrain it but from the ground. The angle that uh, the acceleration angle of the seismic restraints, whether transverse or longitudinal, must be between 0 and 60. The longitudinal restraint must be directly uh, uh, in contact with the pipe, either with a clamp or uh, welding with the pipe. But it's not never uh, on the support itself. It must be in direct contact with the pipe. Uh, this rule stresses again that uh, the hanger size must be able to withstand the compressive forces resulting from the uh, addition of cables, of restraining cables. If it is not able, then it has to be stiffened by these stiffers. And this rule, uh, it shows that uh, there should be at, uh, at least, uh, sorry, at most a quarter of an inch as an uplift limit stop. Uh, to limit the piping from oscillating in vertical directions significantly. 
Rule number 19 uh, is about shield water piping, uh, since we have significant uh, contraction in the pipe usually. Uh, the consideration here is that only one longitudinal restraint can be fitted to the length of the pipe, whatever the length is. So if the length is greater than SL, then I have to add expansion joints and break them into several joints, and each one of them is restrained by a longitudinal restraint. Uh, again, for chill water piping, I will show here on this. Yeah. The distance from an elbow to the first transverse strain, let's see, should be as this given table. I will not use this for the moment. And this rule says that if the piping has sucked from the ceiling, the strain should be uh, uh, taken from the ceiling. If the pipe supports are from the ground, the strain should also be from the ground. This is to, uh, again, remember that I said the restraints uh, must keep the piping moving with the structure as possible as... Uh, in phase. In phase as uh, not much as possible. The last rule is that if you have a piping system that is normally designated an IP equal to 1, but it is above another system with the IP equal 1.5, then the two systems must be considered to be 1.5 and restrained accordingly. So they are both treated like important systems. So a quick example. Suppose I have this piping arrangement here, where pipes 1, 4, and 8 have a length between ST over 2 and ST, while 2, 3, 5, and 7 have lengths that are less than ST over 2, and the step out number 9 has a length that is less than ST over 9. So if I want to start restraining the system, I will consider pipe number one, since its length is between ST over 2 and ST, it requires two transverse restraints, one at each end. So I place this restraint here near the elbow, of, uh, joining with uh, pipe number two to make use of the 24 inch rule. So now this transverse restraint on element number one is a uh, longitudinal restraint on number two. I have to add at least one longitudinal restraint on number one, so I will add on this restraint also to make the use of the alternative pressure. So now, uh, pipe 2 is also restrained transverse and longitudinal directions. So I can skip directly to number 3. I add a transverse and longitudinal also near to number 4 to make use of the same rule. Then number 4 has a longitudinal and a transverse restraints. It needs only one more transverse since, since it is greater than ST of 2. I will suppose that the distance here is more than 24 because I don't know the length of this pipe exactly. So number 5 needs two restraints, longitudinal and transverse. Making use of the 24 inch rule, number 6 does not need any restraint anymore. So I skip to number 7 and then here number 8. Number 8 could be considered only this as a pipe run or the whole pipe here as a single pipe run. It depends on the length of nine. element 9. But since element 9 is less than ST over 19, 8 can be considered as a whole uh, run, and thus it requires two transverse and one restraint. So what are the code-based exemptions? More all the exemptions are shown uh, corresponding to ASCE code. So general exemptions for pipe conduct. Pipe conducts in buildings with uh, seismic categories A or B do not require any seismic restraints, while pipe conduct in buildings of category C and have importance factor of 1 do not require seismic restraint, and pipe conduct that are in buildings D, E, or F and have importance factor of 1, but only that way 5 uh, pounds per foot or less do not require seismic restraints. Pipe specific exemptions. Uh, a pipe has to fulfill all these three conditions to be exempted also. Uh, first, that the pipe should be uh, supported from the ceiling with hangers that are all 12 inches or less in length. If only just one hanger exceeds 12 inches in length, the entire run must be seismically restrained. And the hangers must be able to withstand the, uh, the excessive uh, uh, loads from the seismic uh, excitation. And finally, there has to be enough clearance between the piping, which is exempted, and the other parts to avoid the consequential damage. A second exemption is for welded steel. 
So if the pipe is in uh, category D, E, and F, and has a component uh, importance factor IP equal to 1.5, and the nominal size is one inch or less, it does not require restraining. If it is in uh, building category C, and has IP equal to 1.5, and the nominal pipe size is two inch or less, or if it is in category D, E, and F, but the piping has a portis factor of one, and the length of the diameter is three inches or less. Some duct specific exemptions. Uh, ducts that have an importance factor of one and have the 12 inch rule, which is the length of the most hanger size is 12 inch. So this one is exempted, or it is an IP of one and have a cross sectional area less than 6 feet squared. For electrical systems, uh, the electrical equipment are exempted given that they have an IP of one. And given that a qualified component is selected and supports are designed to withstand the cold mounted forces and displacements. The second exemption is for uh, conduits that have an importance factor of 1.5 but whose size is 2.5 inch or less. And the last exemption is for conduits, dark bus ducts, or cable trays that are supported on trapeze bars given they have an importance factor of 1.5 and have a total weight that is 10 pounds per foot or less. Thank you for the topic. Thank you. Great. So, I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask a question, but I'm afraid uh, you explained it in a lot of top side, so I'm just going to ask it. Uh, you mentioned the different categories for buildings A, B, C, D, uh, mm -hmm. How do we like, yes. uh, justify this one? Yeah. We have here the IBC book. It's the category of the building. Uh, category number one, those least important buildings that are, are indifferent, they are working or not after an earthquake. Up to number four, where like hospitals and fire, they have to be operational after an earthquake. Okay. Taking the category of the building, the occupancy category, um, special engineer calculate the response of the building to uh, short wave and long wave short period wave and long period wave of uh, seismic uh, citation at the site. Mm -hmm. Given these values, SDS and SDL, along with the building category, will give you the building seismic design of the A, B, C, A, B. Mm -hmm. E and F have other equations that I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, can, can you just go quick with that quick example you gave? Yes. This slide. There was one. Yeah, this one. Uh, this the, the 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 pipe with the leg number four. Yes. You have here. You added two. Uh, I have here from two transfer the... supports on this piece, right? Number because four. it was higher than ST. It was bigger than uh, yes. ST. Uh, yes. Half of the ST. Between uh, ST over two and ST. All right. And then uh, my question was the second one that you added in the middle of the pipe. Yes. Can you do it at the end of the pipe so you get rid of the well, other? I don't know exactly what's the length of this one. Remember that we have like 24 inches from here. Yeah. No, no, this one understood. But uh, yeah. for number four. So you need the total length now between this one and this one. So it is 24 inches plus the length. I was not sure. Is it? If I go to the end, it will be larger than ST or not. Ah, okay. So I test it here. Ah, okay, this one. Okay, very good. Okay, just maybe it's a basic question. If you have a, an earthquake movement op opposite of the, for example, if you have a, a movement like this and you have a longitudinal restraint, would it damage that restraint? Like you have a movement like this and your restraints are like this. Well, you will never, as you can see, you will never have a longitudinal restraint alone. Well, if you have an earthquake yeah. and your movement is like this, perpendicular yeah. to the to yeah, the restraint. But you will not, never have a longitudinal alone. You have always transverse and longitudinal. But you have one here, for example. Okay, you have the transverse and the earthquake is like this. Now. Yeah, but this support is support is uh, this oh, sorry, like this. Oh, well, if that will that will compensate yeah. for the other one. Okay. <laughs> Remember that the length, uh, the spacing for uh, longitudinal restraints is twice that of the transverse. So, so one will, and it can be replaced anyone at any place on the pipeline. Doesn't matter. Uh, for for Abu Dhabi, 
like uh, or for here, what is the code we should use? Uh, do we have do we have something documented or? I'm not sure actually, but uh, this ASCE it says that results must be taken from the site. So it's not like the UBC before, like zone to A and yeah. zone to B. No, oh. the results must be taken from the site and these SDS and SDS upon which we are able to design. Important factor, how do you choose it? Uh, there is a table actually, but I thought I didn't have time to show it. It shows you that oh. you have time. It shows you uh, its system, fire fighting system is 1.5 for example. Any duct transferring uh, toxic material from a hospital or something should be 1.5, something like this. So mainly because all of our projects were not doing the seismic uh, restraints. Yeah, no mostly we were not required. Because if you... This would call it. This would call it. So in IT. most cases, uh, number three is either A, B, or C, which are exempted mostly. Because C with uh, an importance factor of one is exempted. Yes. This recording will be mainly A, B, or C. And this is why I don't do it. I don't do it. Okay. Sorry, just uh, quick ones because uh, there is still time and we can learn. Maybe. Where, where, did you, where, where could we get this ST value? You showed it in this time. Ah, in uh, Smagna. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention Smagna from Smagna uh, standard. Sorry, it's unfortunate. Here, this one, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Smagna have tables. Uh, they have calculated depending on the sorry. type of the material of the construction mm -hmm. and uh, how much buckling resistance there is on the pipe, how much is the yield strength of the pipe, something like this, and they give. By experience, I think, or by empirical data, what is the space Perfect. Two quick ones. Sorry. Uh, the same can apply for your cable trays? Yeah. Maybe. Some length. Uh, but that's our, uh, so supported the by trapeze. It's the same. Uh, actually, for trapeze supports, it's only about the weight. So if the weight is like less than 110 LB square feet, then. Uh, okay, my last one. Uh, rule number one, two, if you can just quickly mm -hmm. see it again. Yeah, rule number one just defines the no? pipe dynamic. No, only water? Uh, yeah. Rule number one most only defines the pipe dynamic, which is the straight pipe between two elbows. And rule number two defines the offset, this one. And it says that if the offset is less than ST over 16, these two pipes could be considered as a single round. Ah, okay. Thank you. You asked if it applies on cable trigger, right? Okay. My question. Uh, you reached an question, but <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> we finished. That's my fault.